Ito ang lupang hinirang. Ang perlas ng silangan. Ang tahanan ng ating lahi. Isang bayang binuduyan sa kayamanan at kagandahan. Each island in itself, paradise siya yung kaiba, yung karisma ng koron. Nandoon sa pag-ikot-ikot mo and finding surprise, small surprises in each destination. The place it's built there, you know, these mountains come from the movement of the plates and so it's brought the minerals to the surface. So they're accessible, they're definitely there. You have some of the richest deposits in the world. You just not look for them. In terms of uh, natural resources, siguro, isa tayo sa pinakamayaman sa buong mundo. Alam mo naman yung Pilipino, kahit saan, magaling talaga, di ba? Importante sa amin to na may pagmalaki natin yung mga talent ng mga Pilipino. Not only in Canada, no? worldwide. There's so much talent in the Philippines. What I've noticed is that our human resource has become truly the wealth of the nation. Mga yamang kung magagamit lang daw ng tama ay maglalagay sa atin sa mapa ng pinakamaunlad sa buong mundo. Bansang Australia ang pang-anim na may pinakamalagong ekonomiya sa buong mundo. Sa pag-unlad na ito, malaki ang naging papel ng yaman ng kanilang lupa, gaya ng ginto. But mining has also been just as important in terms of the economy. In terms of uh, exports from Australia, you know, mining makes up nearly half the country's exports. So we create a lot of wealth and it's been like that for several decades as you point out. So that means there's 82% of the economy out there that's running around doing pretty well on the wealth being generated by the minerals industry. Mataas ang kalidad ng pamumuhay dito sa Melbourne. Tahanan ito ng mga pinakamatatandang mining company sa buong mundo at nakabase ang mga pinakamalalaking kumpanya Hanggang ngayon, 121 billion US dollars ang kinikita taon-taon ng Australia mula sa pagmimina at 50% ng kanilang mga exports galing sa minahan. Kung nabura na sa lungsod ang bakas ng pagmimina dito sa Sovereign Hill, hindi lang ito isinasabuhay. Bahagi na ito ng turismo na dadala ng malaking kita sa Australia. Ganitong ganito nagsimula ang mining dito sa bayan ng Ballarat sa Melbourne noong 1850s. Parang sa Pilipinas, minimina lang ang gold na tinatawag nilang surface gold dahil nasa ibabaw lang siya ng lupa at ng mga, mga ilog na katulad nito. Kasabay ng pag-unlad ng bansa ay ang kanilang pamamaraan para mas responsabling makuha ang yaman ng kanilang lupa. Kawa ko ngayon na napakabigat na labing pitong kilo ng ginto na 97 to 99% pure gold ito. Yung natitirang 1% daw ay malamang silver at meron pang maliit na maliit na porsyento ng mga impurities na nandito. Di 
Dito naman sa Kalgoorlie Boulder, ang tinaguriang The Great Outback ng Australia, 30% ng kinikita ng Australia sa pagmimina galing dito. What was Kalgoorlie before the gold rush? Nothing. It was discovered by a couple of prospectors at the top of Hannon Street. They kicked over some uh, nuggets and they started uh, uh, mines back then. And that's why we've got the, the unusual situation where we've got a, a rather large town right on the edge of the Golden Mile. Bukod sa ginto, mayaman din ang bansang Australia sa copper, silver at iba't ibang semi-precious stones and metals na siyang nagpapagulong ng ekonomiya ng bansa. We are classified as a precious metals mint, so we only work in pure silver, pure gold, pure platinum and pure platinum. I see, okay. So, and who would purchase these coins? Investors all around the world. We still produce hundreds of thousands of precious metal coins every year and we export close to 80% of what we produce to foreign nations. Tunay ngang haligi ng ekonomiya ng Australia ang pagmimina. Ang kita ng bansa mula sa pag-e-export ng mga mineral ay umaabot sa 138 billion dollars kada taon. Katumbas ito ng higit 50% ng kabuang GDP ng bansa. Bagamat mahigit isang daang taon nang nagmimina ang Australia, malaking bahagi pa rin ang kanilang lupain ang hindi pa namimina hanggang ngayon. Yamang nakabaon pa rin at naghihintay na matuklasan. Ang bansang Canada ay modelo naman ng wasto at responsabling pamamaraan ng pagkuha ng mineral muna sa lupa. Maigting nilang isinusulong ngayon ang tinatawag na sustainable mining. Bukod sa ginto, mayaman din sa jamante ang Canada. Ang industriya ay pangunahing tagapagtaguyod ng ekonomiya ng bansa. Sa taong 2012, ito ay nakapag-ambag ng $52.6 billion sa GDP ng Canada. Nakapagbigay ito ng mahigit 400,000 trabaho. 20% ng kabuang produktong na i-export ng bansa hango sa pagmimina. Nagkakahalaga ng 47 bilyong dolya. In this country, there is a, a broad understanding of how important it is uh, mineral development, mining is for the economy of the province. Our city here, Toronto, that we're visiting in today is a global center for mining finance. There's over 75,000 jobs directly and indirectly in the mining industry in this province. So I think people understand how important it is. I think their interest in it really lies in making sure that it's done in a way that's uh, socially responsible in a way that considers the environmental impacts in the long run, and that we're using technology and, and modern uh, regulations to, uh, to really drive the development. Isa sa pinakamahal na bato ay ang diamante o diamonds. Ito ay dahil bibihira lang ang mga lugar kung saan ito mamimina. At isa sa mga bansang kumikinang sa yamang ito ay ang Canada. Pagdating sa bigat at halaga ng mga diamanteng namimina, ikatlo ang Canada sa buong mundo, kasunod lamang ng Botswana at Russia. At dalawa sa tatlong minahan ng diamante dito sa Canada ay matatagpuan sa Yellow Knife, ang tinaguriang Diamond Capital of North America. Noong dekada 30, ginto ang pangunahing minimina ng mga taga Yellow Knife pero noong dekada 90, natuklasang mayaman din pala sila sa diamante. How was this like when the mines were still operating? And okay, this, this was this was the town site uh, uh, of the mine up on the hills. You can see some abandoned houses with, that are boarded up. Uh, the, What are those houses? They were residential. Houses? They were residents. You, you said that people who work in the mines are some of the highest paid in Canada? The guys that drove the big trucks at a caddy, $38 to $40 an hour. Some people will say, you know, mining is such a destructive operation. Yeah. And it leaves land totally useless after the mines have been 
have been closed and all the minerals have been mined out. Uh, do you see a future like that for the North Northwest no. Territory? You know, we're looking at yeah. giant mine and you'll hear lots of stories about it being a, a environmental disaster. Well, we're sitting in it and it doesn't look too disastrous to me. Sa katunayan, isa sa pinakapamosong tourist destination sa Canada ay ang Butchart Garden. Sa buong Butchart Garden, ang sunken garden na ito ang itinuturing na obra maestra ng mag-asawang Butchart. Ang hirap isipin na dati itong sentro ng quarry site ng pabrika ng semento nila. Ngunit ngayon, masasabing ang sugat na naiwan ng paghukay ng limestone ganap nang naghilom dahil hindi lang nila naibalik ang ganda ng kalikasan ngunit hinigitan pa nila ito at ngayon tanyag na ang hardin sa buong mundo Dito sa Pilipinas, tinatayang nasa higit 800 bilyong dolyar ang halaga ng nakabaong mineral. Isa sa bawat tatlong ektaryang lupa sa Pilipinas naglalaman ng mga precious metal tulad ng ginto, copper, nickel at chromite. Kung miminahi ng mga ito, tinatayang tataas ng sampung beses ang GDP ng Pilipinas kada taon. Sa halagang ito, maaari na nating bayaran ang ating utang panlabas ng labing limang beses. Makikinabang ang mga pamilyang tulad ni Namang Manuel, isang third generation miner na matagal nang nakikinabang sa biyaya ng lupa. Isulahan nila, yung mga anak ko, libre hanggang dito sa high school. Wala po kaming binabayaran na pan, yung mga expenses lang na misilanyos, yun lang ang binibayaran namin yung mga projects nila. Anong, pero sa tuition fee ng high school at saka libintero, wala. Libre talaga, talaga binipisyo po namin ng maganda yun. At kasama sa kanilang pag-unlad, ang pag-angat din ng kabuhayan ng mga karatig bayan na pinakikinabangan ang mga positibong pagbabagong dala ng minahan. Pero sa dati talaga, hindi ka na makadudubli dahil yung ano, limited yung paghakot. Eh. Yung kaya mo lang buhatin ganun. Pero ngayon, nagtitriple, nagdudubli dahil kutsi na ang sasakyan. Hinahakot na yung kutsi. Mas mabuti na ngayon. Parang gumaganda at saka gumagan ang hirap ng pagdala ng karga. Kaya sa kabila ng hagupit ng kalikasan, ang komunidad na kanilang kinabibilangan ay nakikiisa sa pagwawasto sa mga hamong kanilang kinakaharap. IPs and multinational companies could still exist provided the cultures of the IPs are being respected. The concept that uh, the IPs are barriers to progress, it's hard to accept that because for me, Many of our IPs in the mountain provinces also recognize that progress is really necessary for the country. And uh, I think it's just a matter of uh, respecting the culture of the IPs and uh, arriving with a compromise. Para tuklasin at unawain ang lawak at lalim ng yaman ng ating bayan, nilibot ng News 5, hindi lamang ang buong bansa, kundi maging ang Canada, Australia at pati na Malaysia. Saan nga ba natin sila katulad? When did uh, your company start eyeing it for transformation? Um, the transformation started from day one that our founder bought this piece of land 30 years ago. Um, he bought this uh, piece of land uh, cheaply. It was a wasteland, nothing was here. The lake that you see now was just an empty hole the deepest point being 200 meters deep. He had the vision to not just create a golf course, but to create a world-class golf course. Saan ba tayo naiiba? Sino mag-aakala na ang lugar na kinatatayuan ko ngayon ay isang dating minahan ng lata, ang pinaka malaking open pit tin mine sa buong mundo. 
nag-iwan ito ng isang uka na dalawang kilometro ang haba, isang kilometro ang lapad, at mahigit dalawang daang metro ang lalim. Pero ngayon, ang ukang yan, isa ng napakagandang lawa sa loob ng isang world-class resort. Gaya ng tanyag na Niagara Falls dito sa Ontario, Canada. Kasama ang mga journong sina Robbie Alampay at Erwin Tulfo, tinanong namin ang mga mapanghamong tanong. We just wanted to know how does Canada go about it nowadays when it comes to mining or extractive industries in general vis-a-vis the First Nations. We have to talk to them earlier in our project scale. We have to uh, be respectful and understand the communities that we're dealing with. And it's also in incumbent on the companies to start looking at how they're going to train these uh, community members so they can participate uh, with direct jobs in the mining sector but also in the business end of things so that they can become uh, owners of businesses that will service the various projects. <laughs> Nagkaroon ba ng imminent, immediate danger sa nature, sa mga tao? Because that's what they're saying. Yung mga critics, why we're saying na uh, mining should be stopped in this country. Was it really a danger? Was there really danger? It would not be repeated again because uh, we would abandon that system of uh, draining water from the tailings pan. We have, you have heard about the construction of that open spillway. It costs about uh, 325 million. So that water now will pass through that open spillway. No more to that pen stock or that compartment where that incident happened. That's why we are sure now that that would that incident would no longer happen. How important is mining in our life today? The answer is, uh, you know, our, our entire civilization depends on metals and minerals. Uh, whether you get it from the Philippines or whether you get it from Australia or somewhere else is is a is a is a separate issue. But from a societal point of view, we need minerals and mining, so it's going to happen. The question is, so who's going to benefit from it? They all contribute to us being able to employ our people and product, uh, produce the, the gold or the copper or whatever the mining product is. So not only just the mining employees, but there's a whole community supporting that enterprise. And they're, they're also benefiting by providing services and goods to that enterprise and downstream from that. You know, once you produce copper, you can produce wire, you can produce rod, you can produce pipe and tube, and you can have a whole bunch of new industries growing off the back of that product. And won't it be a great story when we have Filipino ore becoming Filipino metal, becoming Filipino manufactured goods. In Malaysia, we've actually been able to turn around the mines concept. You put in quality products, you put in your heart, you put in your passion, and really doing good for the community, doing good for the environment. And we're very happy to say that if you mention mines in Malaysia, people would link it to, you know, good things and not bad things. You know, we have good golf courses, good homes, you know, beautiful scenery, beautiful landscape, um, good uh, services and hospitality. Ito ang yaman ng bayan. Mapapanood nyo, eksklusibo sa TV5.